Hello and welcome to the Rapid Microbiology Podcast and I'm your host Paul Carton. Today's topic is on the development and manufacturing of lateral flow tests that are currently in widespread use around the world to rapidly detect SARS-CoV-2 in workplaces, airports, schools and at home. Joining me today is Andre Alfaro, who is Director of Assay Development at Nano Composites, a company that provide medical device manufacturers the know-how and materials to get their lateral flow test to market. Hi, Andre, and thank you for coming on today to share your rapid test expertise. It's great to be here, Paul. Can you tell me, Andre, what services do Nano Composites offer companies looking to develop a lateral flow test? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So really how we like to position ourselves is, is full service and full spectrum. This goes from early concept design, say marker discovery, rapid prototyping, all the way to high throughput automated manufacturing. So we actually function as both a CRO and a CMO. And this is not something you kind of have to jump in at the start of any particular phase. Lots of companies come in at different points. You know, so, some people already have a, have a target biomarker and some early prototyping on ELISA and want to transition that to something more um, commercially viable like lateral flow. Or they have a lateral flow test that they've had some issues with maybe it's sensitivity or mm. kinetics and we come in and help overcome those obstacles and at the end of it some companies are finished all of that they they've done the hard the hard part the heavy lifting they they finished development they've frozen their design and they're looking for uh, a cmo to manufacture their test at scale at, at a, a reasonable cost and this is where we come in with automation okay. uh, and we can manufacture up to you know, 25 million tests so we can help you pretty much across the board i like to think okay so you're offering some t- turnkey solutions let's say and some modular offerings as well so have you have you actually had anyone come ha- have a test on the market and then or develop a test that wasn't sensitive and then say we need improvement on this is that something you've done before Absolutely. And, and and this is for tests that are on the market and we're helping with Gen 2. Um, that's something we definitely do. Um, there's always a competitive space on whether you're on you're on the agriculture side, the infectious disease side, the vet space, and mm. the, across the board. There's always going to be a need to, to be more accurate, uh, more sensitive, um, and, that's, and that's what we can help with. So, mm. and, and you hit it right on the head there <clears throat> there is you know turnkey solutions to something so to expedite development we leverage kind of our experience to develop platforms that kind of suit most people's needs and then we tailor and customize those processes and and, and tests to to suit the specific requirements of individual tests and we're scientists at our core so we like novel solutions we like creating something new creating new ip for our customers and and building something to overcome you know different obstacles so um whether you, you want a fast turnkey solution or you want something new, novel, and custom, we can do both. Okay, and it is becoming a competitive market, so customers are going to seek out those experts who are, you know, on cutting edge of development, really. Absolutely. I mean, you, you, you almost have to have that edge. And if you could have something, some component, and maybe that's our, you know, um, novel gold nano shells that we, we produce in house okay. um, to give you that extra sensitivity. That's really what sets us apart. And so, in terms of SARS CoV 2, and there's so many tests coming on the market, what can you offer companies wishing to develop their own lateral flow test for SARS CoV 2 in particular? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a great question and really relevant to, to the world today. Um, there are a lot of antigen tests out there, but you know there's not a lot of good antigen tests out there. Mm. Um, what we bring to the table is experience developing uh, new generation COVID antigen tests that are faster, more sensitive, more accurate. Um, we've done through this through well, I don't know if geez, I'm losing count of how many FDA submissions I've done now. We're about up to six, I believe with three approved tests that we've helped develop using our custom nanomaterials. Very good. Um, and and that's what we do. We bring experience. Uh, we bring in competitive advantage in terms of uh, integrated solutions to not only the manufacturing development, but also the nanomaterial um, to really provide customers far and away a better test than what, what was out there before. Most of the attention is for antigen tests, but there is a lot of antibody tests out in the market. Do you have many customers come and looking for antibody test development. 
Absolutely. And this is this is one that hits close to home. So uh, I can go to a long diatribe on this one. How I, I love these tests. I we, we actually developed one of the most sensitive serological tests uh, for neutralizing antibody out there. Okay. Um, that we can use as a platform um, as like a, uh, it, for other people interested. Yeah. And we do. I've done this for other countries like Brazil and India. The U.S. is is tough. The FDA um, is doesn't know what to do with an antigen test or excuse me, an antibody test Mm. just yet. That information, all valuable to me, like I want to know what my antibody titers are. I just got, I just got my booster the other week. I I loved seeing my immune response change and I can see it Mm. in five minutes in my house. And it was great. I mean, I have a a newborn and I shouldn't admit it, but I mean, we, you know, we do, we were curious of seeing if, you know, if those antibodies are transferring via breast milk to the baby hey i have a test to do that Mm. it's 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 a i think it has a ton of value internationally outside the u.s there are methods to get that to market i i mean i think it's a i think it's a test that people want for regulatory purposes it's really hard to do that in the u.s though but they really haven't hit the market like antigen tests but um i think it you just haven't been marketed properly or um i i think a lot of people believe that the results you get from that aren't is aren't that accurate considering you know you, there's different antibody tests for vaccine effectiveness and there's also different tests for post infection right and they're two they do two different things and then that, this is why coming from the science side i love having this conversation because you know there's a there's a a rationale how you mm. design these tests to to make a conclusion on it you know, there's a difference between the Johnson and Johnson vaccine versus something like uh, the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine, mm. right? These RNA vaccines are specific to um, creating an antibody that that blocks uh, a specific protein, right? And that that's what induces neutralization. And when you break the cell, the virus's ability to infect cells, our test tests just for that antibody specific to that protein. Uh, that 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 RBD protein that that blocks and and virus coming in, um, or you can have just a generic antibody test like Johnson and Johnson. So you'll see on our test, it can even tell you what vaccine you've had based on the results of the test. And um, there's all, there is some other contract manufacturers like yourself providing a similar service. Why would medical device companies come to you to develop and get your know how? Uh, and, and choose you over other similar services on the market. Yeah, I like to think it's my charming personality, but no really, it's the the science <laughs> and the capabilities. And and um, I mean, this is why I'm at this company, and and it's 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 a lot of fun to work at a company that gives me all the solution and tools, and our customers those solution and tools. So not only, like I said, not only can we develop an asset, and we have a, a team that does that. Um, all day, every day, and that's that's my development teams. Um, but not only can we do that, not only have we done that for a very long time, but we also have I mean, the manufacturing component. So I'm not transferring it to a CMO. I'm transferring it to the other building across the like, 30 feet from me, who does automated manufacturing at scale. So those, those handoffs are all built in. Those integrations are all built in to, to make this quicker and faster. And and because we have that integration into manufacturing. Unlike a lot of other CROs, you know, we're not here. Our business model is predicated on moving customers through development quickly and into manufacturing. That's that's where we want to go. So I'm not here to, to elongate or go slow during development. I'm here to turn as many knobs as I can as quick as I can, um, but within our, our ISO 1345 quality system to move you into manufacturing. So we leverage our experience, we leverage our capabilities, we leverage the fact that we're also manufacture all the nanomaterials and antibodies here, or I shouldn't say antibodies here, that's our sister company, hmm. uh, Bethel, who um, it is great to have, I should say, a, a antibody or custom antibody development uh, and recombinant antibody developer on our team, which is awesome. Okay. Um, so we have these integrations to get you from A to Z quicker than anyone else. Um, and you you mentioned gold particles earlier on. This is a a uh, an important part of a lateral flow test. Just just tell me how important gold particles are in the ones you have for medical medical devices. 
Yeah, I mean that that's a great segue. And you know, by my background was in biochemistry, not in organic chemistry like these guys in the other room. Um, but our our company, Nanocomposites, it really has uh, three pillars: the CRO services, CMO services, uh, and the products side. And the product side have been making nanomaterial now for 20 years. And these guys are really good at what they do. And the innovation and, and the novel particles that come out of that side is fascinating to me. Um, and and talking about you know, what sets that apart, you know, we have the ability to customize nanoparticles, sizes, surfaces, geometries to meet customer needs and really create new and interesting um, particles for people. And now because of that, though, we've, we've organically created um, really sensitive and different nanoparticles for lateral flow. So we have the traditional 40 nanometer gold colloids. We have the traditional 80 nanometer gold colloids. But what other people have, it, what we have and other people don't have uh, is, is gold nanoshells, which are just phenomenal for, for lateral flow. These things are are designed specifically for lateral flow because of their optical properties. What we, what we did, and if people know, there's there's an advantage to having larger particles. You know, visually you can see larger larger things better. Makes right? sense. Yeah. More light. Uh, but the problem is is w is with flow and kinetics with something that big. You know, it's it's like rolling a boulder down that strip. Mm -hmm. Once you go, once the gold colloids get too big, it just doesn't doesn't function very well. Yeah. Now what we did was. Uh, and it sounds so simple, uh, but it, it was very complicated, uh, was what we did it was take, we knew we wanted to to reduce the density of those particles and have them flow a little better, but keep that size. So what we did was we took a silica core and then shelled that with gold. So because the optical properties, it doesn't mean the whole, the whole sphere has to be a solid mm. gold colloid. But the shelling will give it that optical properties, and there, and so these gold nano shells are, are have the benefits of large gold, but the flow characteristics of small, and they work great. Okay, they're just lighter and they're easier, or light, lighter, make, making them easier to flow and uh, big enough to, uh, for readers to pick them up. Right, and they absorb. I mean, this is why you get this very definitive kind of. I I think my color blindness comes out sometimes. I think they look black, but I've been told they're blue green. Mm -hmm. uh, they <laughs> so that tells you how old I am. Um, they they are it's very unique kind of we'll call it green gray green as I'm supposed to. <laughs> but I'm, I'm kind of blind also. I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> and it looks great on the white nitrocellulose. So I mean, you really see these. They really stand out. And this is why. And we use COVID as an example of this. We've done a lot of side by side testing for you know whether it was BD or Abbott or any of these co companies with OTC tests, we side by side the tests we develop with our customers with our nanoshells against these, and it's not even close. So there's definitely an advantage across the board for whether it's infectious disease and COVID or something else. If you want visual color metric detection, you should talk to us and we can help you. Great. And uh, now quality standards for lateral flow tests, especially for COVID. The the bar has been raised several times by medical product agencies, health product agencies. So, can you help medical device manufacturers achieve the specificity, sensitivity, and limit of detection that is now required for approval in e Europe, UK? I'm not sure about the US if they've changed much, but um... <laughs> no, the bar is still pretty high here in the US too. And and the answer is absolutely. I mean, like I said, we've done this about six times now, um, going through regulatory bodies, whether that was Health Canada, uh, the FDA. Uh, whether it was um, in Australia or Europe, um, Brazil, we know we know what is required. We know how to design these products to get you through that efficiently and quickly. And that's where we help. I mean, this isn't you know, we don't put our services in a box like, oh, we just developed a strip. No, we will help you write those EUAs. We'll help you and hold your hand through those conversations. I don't, I don't think a week goes by where I don't have some conversation um with the fda reviewer um or a regulatory body i mean this is my job i help my customers okay. this company helps our customers and um so we do this and one of the reasons why we do this so effectively is the quality at which we design and develop products and manufacture products uh, i don't need to develop it to manufacture it well and we have very high standard with our iso 1345 
certified quality management system. We just finished an audit. Our yearly audit was two weeks ago. It went great. Um, so this is both for development and manufacturing uh, um, of medical devices. So we have the quality and the experience to help. Okay. Now, the, the term, I'm sure you'll agree, lateral flow or rapid test has been dragged through the mud in the last 18 months since the start of the pandemic. And this was due to unsatisfactory diagnostic accuracy. Can you tell me, in your opinion, what was the main reasons these kits performed so badly in real world settings? Yeah, I mean, that's that's been a hot topic for a while. And from someone who's very close to all of it, who knows all these companies and the people who develop these tests and all the recalls that I'm seeing, um, it it is not unexpected. So let me start with that. But there's a reason why it's not unexpected. And and, and really, the first company, the companies that are getting recalled, these issues that we've seen with these tests and uh, the efficacy really on the sensitivity and specificity that we talked about. It's because the first tests that got out there um, were used really two things. They were using subpar material because there just wasn't a lot of antibodies mm -hmm. and, and good affinity reagents that were developed very early on. And the first gen products were just not very good. Mm -hmm. um, they did the job initially, but really once it started, once we started learning how to validate what we had to look for, um, you quickly saw the problems with it mm. and and this is this was kind of the root of the problem and the fda and these regulatory bodies are finally learning how to accurately uh or uh, how to truly review and approve tests initially all they needed to do was get something out there because it provided a a benefit to the people to have something right we needed something mm -hmm. early on that something wasn't particularly great and we learned that later. But now the standards have changed. Now you can't just be something. You have to be great. And not only do you have to be great, but you actually have to, you know, be able um, to, to, and this is something I get from the FDA a lot, it has to provide a substantial benefit in terms of, um, uh, of say, manufacturing scale. Like, I, they don't want to test that you can only manufacture a thousand of. They want to test that you can manufacture a million of them out. And not only that, now they want, it used to be, you know, 80% sensitivity specificity. Now it goes through redundant independent validations. Those numbers have to be above 90% uh, or they just put it in a pile with all the other ones. There's, there's a substantial difference now uh, on how the reviews are getting done. And cause, but earlier on, there was no standards. Now there is. I think also part of the problem was that I think some of the pilot projects where they tested how good these lateral flow tests were those pilot projects weren't managed properly where they were testing someone once and expecting <laughs> and then, you know, negative results. And then that was it. That was the, that was the how the, the project was done. <laughs> and I think now everyone's starting to realize that if you test, if you use a lateral flow test on someone every two days, that's just almost as accurate as your PCR test. So right. and I think that's why they got a bad, bad rap. I think absolutely, rip, yeah. absolutely. The design of the studies was very poor early on, mainly because, you know, they didn't they didn't know how to design them. Now there's very strict rules for OTC uh, and POC clinicals. I mean, we've done it enough times now that I can probably regurgitate all the requirements here, but I'll I will save you and the audience <laughs> that that pleasure. I'm sure if um, you're available through email and phone, if anyone wants to hear it. <laughs> Um, uh, of course, I, I, I think all my uh, information's on the website good. Uh, for nano composites. But I, I mean, I, I love talking about this stuff. This is I have a passion for for um, assay development and what we do. It just it's just a lot of fun to bring people's ideas and products to markets. And absolutely I've been doing this now for seventeen years, and I'm pretty darn good at it. <laughs> Very good. Uh, and so, in the early days of the pandemic, test kit manufacturers couldn't fill fill orders. And so there was orders sitting on desktops and just and, and weren't being completed. And this was this was due to shortages in uh, supplies, you know, materials and reagents that are used in SARS-CoV-2 tests. Can you tell me what are nanocomposites manufacturing capabilities and how robust is your supply chain if a similar strain on on, on this supply chain happens again? Yeah, that, that is, you know, a particular importance when, as I mentioned before, scale of manufacturing is almost a requirement for COVID. No, not so much for other tests, but for COVID, it definitely is when, when you talk to these regulatory bodies. 
And you don't have manufacturing without supply chain control. You know, earlier, early on, you alluded to the issues that they saw with manufacturing and getting raw materials. Um, and that was just a byproduct of, of, the, of the systems that were in place at the time. And, you know, there was this, this crazy influx of material needs and simple things, paper, um, swabs, tubes. Now, these companies had the capacity to manufacture these, and now they're the, now they're actually doing it at scale and meeting the needs. Uh, earlier on, though, there, none of the systems for any of these companies were designed for that kind of production. Uh, thus, you had that big, you know, lead times. Nowadays, it's it's not nearly as as grievous as, as it was back then. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not I get everything I want in a week, but you plan ahead. I mean, this is where the this is where our uh, material management. Uh, and manufacturer team really comes in to help with that. We set up these supply agreements for a customer. We develop manufacturing plans to to account for these lead times to ensure that we have everything we need um, ready for our customers. So um, you know that's kind of where where it's at now is with proper planning, we have the capacity to do. Um, all the manufacturing at scale, like I said, up to 25 million here in nano composites, uh, we can do that. And we do that with organization, uh, management, uh, and really proper planning. Is it 25 million per year, I assume? Uh, per month. Per month, per month, just to be clear on that. Okay. Uh, autom- automation is a wonderful thing, my friend. You know, viruses mutate by their very nature. Um, the latest Omicron variant which is which is spreading already in our communities uh, and medical device companies need to ensure their kits are variant proof is this mm-hmm. part of your development program absolutely our job is to keep up with all of that is the second we find out about a new variant or a new cross reactor species or interference that the fda is requiring for testing we're on top of it we, we do this all the time so we have a bsl2 uh, on site to work with infectious diseases. Um, we don't grow them, so we don't have a BSL-3, but mm-hmm. we can test them in our BSL-2. And what we did is create partnerships with companies um, that de- do grow and culture the virus. And then they, we work with them to um, secure these new strains immediately. They inactivate them and send it to us so we can do our um, TCID-50 measurements and LOD measurements with the new virus. So we have that system built in and ready to go. Okay, yeah, um, saliva-based tests for SARS-CoV-2 uh, are in high demand because they can be self-administered, because and they're in high demand because of their non-invasive and user-friendly design. Do you have any experience in developing a saliva-based test? Absolutely. Now you're talking to one of our sweet spots. Hmm. Um, so being um, a nanoparticle manufacturer and having that. Um, really novel nano shells and having the most sensitive color metric particles. It was a natural transition into being a, 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 a big player in the saliva diagnostic space, because if you're doing saliva and you're choosing a very non-invasive matrix, it's usually because you want it to be simple and at home uh, test. And if you're going to do that, you want to avoid costly things like readers. Thus you're going to move away from fluorescence and into colorimetric readouts. So we've done quite a few um, saliva-based tests uh, over the years. And and this is not that we just developed the strip and not that we just work on, you know, normalizing the matrix, which is anyone working with saliva knows is not the easiest thing to do in the world, mm-hmm. both with viscosity and pH and all those fun constituents in there that make it a difficult matrix. Um, we help with all that strip design, but we also help with the engineering of that um, cassette. We help with the selection of, you know, whether it's swabs uh, or tubes or these consumable portions. We'll help build that system with you uh, with the strip and, and provide that experience to do it. And it is, I mean, honestly, I mean, the writing's on the wall in terms of of empowering people to do, you know, surveillance, monitoring, tracking of their health independently. I mean, it, we're, the insurance companies see, see the benefit of, of empowering people to do testing, preventative 
medicine, as they call it, mm-hmm. uh, and being able to take test home, as in OTC, it is going to really help people and keep people healthy. And, and saliva would be a great way to do it. We don't want people having to, you know, take blood draws at home if we can avoid mm. it. So if we can, and this is, you know, nanocomposite stance, we, we want to help you get your test, saliva test to market in that space. Sure. And even, well, even the lower nasopharyngeal swabs aren't too bad to use. Um, not as The lower ones. Yeah. yeah. You don't want those brain ticklers. No, for sure. <laughs> um, now, the rapid low, rapid lateral flow tests have been on the market, as you said before, for me, in, in many industries, agricultural, veterinary and stuff like that. But uh, in the medical device field, for our HIV, there's, there's lateral flow tests on the market that can detect HIV antibodies in 60 seconds. Can this be achieved with SARS-CoV-2 antigen tests? And if so, how? why hasn't it been done already? Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting way to put it in a good example. And, I mean, it really is you know, something like HIV. We've been developing rapid diagnostics for 40 years. And we've had the time to really develop novel solutions to that very question you brought up. How can I get a high sensitivity, very rapid test? Um, and it took time to get there. It took time to develop those affinity reagents and that platform to do it. We've really only been working on COVID now for you know, two-ish years. Um, and in time, I think it's going to go there. And it will almost assuredly have to go there. And we want to help customers get there. <laughs> that, that's Those are the interesting projects. If we have those custom affinity reagents, and I love working with antibody companies, um, uh, that that are developing these and and helping them get a platform out there. I think it will happen. It hasn't happened yet, and the reason why it's just time time to develop that material and time to develop that platform. But it will happen, and I think that's that's going to be a very commercially viable test when it's ready. Okay, can you give our listeners some peace of mind who may want to get in touch with you um, to develop a lateral flow test by telling us what ISO standards your manufacturing site and products certi- are certified to? Yeah, of course, and and. It's one thing to develop an assay. It's one thing to develop an assay um, correctly, as in you, with all the right design controls to ensure that the safety and reproducibility of the test is there. And and that's why Nanocomposite is, is proud to be an ISO 1345 certified company for both manufacturing and development of medical devices. It, it, it provides us the guidelines of, of developing assays to make them truly what we're, we're claiming they are. And so we rest assured um, that we, we do things not only fast, but we do it right. Great. Uh, do you have any final words of wisdom for any company looking to get their test to market? Oh, man, how much time do I have? <laughs> I mean, it's, there's a, <laughs> there's a, 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 definitely a lot of advice. Um, okay. Do you, mean, any, on... <laughs> uh, brief, <laughs> do you have any brief um, <laughs> words of uh, wisdom? I, I would say it's never as straightforward as it, you may think at the start. And what you need to do is talk talk to talk to the experts in the in the different spaces and really understand that landscape first and create up a good plan. The success of a product is is I wouldn't say a hundred percent dependent on it, but there's a correlation between success and proper planning. Um, and that and that's where we help. And I and we I could definitely nanocomposites and myself can help with that planning. And once you have a good plan, once you have that strategy, and not just hey, I want this assay to detect this marker at this sensitivity, go beyond that and think about things from the finish line back to the start of the race. And that's really where I come in. I don't think about problem. I have an excellent development team who thinks about the micro and making that assay meet the specifications it needs. My job is to think about the macro on why. Are those specifications they what are they are what what is the, the intended use population how is this test fair against its competitors what do we need to do to get there and i i developed the plan from the from the finish line backwards and, and i have the best scientists and chemists in the world working it on from the other end on looking at the micro great so that would be my advice uh, thank you very much andre for coming on today you're obviously the, uh, of course you're, this is a pleasure you're obviously the go-to guy for lateral flow test and so don't expect much sleep for a while as i imagine you're going to be quite busy <laughs> if not already oh sleep is just a dream these days <laughs> paul I, I have a three-month-old so it is all just i forgot what sleep was <laughs> is can't even say it straight that's how tired i am
These lateral flow assays are an important weapon in our arsenal against COVID-19 and are now part of our daily lives and might be for some time to come. And thank you to the listener for making the time.